Good evening, everybody. Welcome uh, to the MTGPL uh, Twitch, and this is the finals of our Legacy Challenge. My name's Dr. Leo, uh, one of the mods here from the MTGPL, and I'm with here with my homie, Mike Diff. How you doing, buddy? Doing all right. How about you? Not too bad. Enjoying just another good uh, weekend of Legacy, you know, promoting uh, the eternal magic and just, you know, having a good time. So Absolutely. can't complain. Minus this uh, massive storm that's happening outside. Yeah, it sounds like it's uh, it's a mess out there. Yeah, we're getting some pretty nasty hail. Probably going to be our first snow of the season tonight. Yeah, I, can't, I wish I could say it's the same up here in New England. Oh, you're probably already getting hit. Uh, only one bad one so far, but oh, you know. Nice. All right, so what do we got going on here tonight? We got Black Sky Duck on uh, his normal uh, bug doomsday list. Uh, which if you are uh, familiar with our stream, you've more than likely seen him on here playing this list before. And uh, we have MTG Play, who I think is new to the channels. Is that right, Doc? Yeah, MTG Play is one of our new members. You know, everybody, hey, welcome, as always. So you can hit the exclamation point Discord to get an invitation. Uh, Leftco says in the chat, one of our more uh, prolific members and finalists of our uh, our our league system that we do every uh, well, league thing and also our uh uh season system that we do which these players are earning points okay uh okan thanks for the follow buddy but uh so we have uh so with ntg play he's on esper stoneblade and it's kind of a pretty you know mid-rangey grindy list uh more akin to esper vile uh just because he's got more of a creature package than a stoneforge package but i mean esper is just a solid color to be in right now mostly because of this powerful new mm -hmm. card skyclave apparition and it looks like we're off uh we got a tundra pass from mtg play yeah probably just holding up some sort of interaction but what do you think about uh skyclave mike I think that it is uh, ridiculous. It's an absolutely ridiculous magic card. Um, it handed my own butt to me today, uh, in fact. Um, oh, wow. And uh, I think it is one of the best things to happen to white in a long time. I agree. I'm rocking two of them in my sideboard right now because they're just so good. But uh, the fact that permanently exiles anything so especially when you're on a vile deck it's amazing to get those instant speed exiling for euros stuff like that and in this deck it's just pure value because you have other effects like to fairy time raveler to bounce it reset it steal something else and then give your opponent something that's useless like an illusion yeah the it really can really it can really set some plans back um i don't know if it's going to be any good in this matchup, um, actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be any good in this matchup. It's pretty much uh, a blank in this matchup. It's just an effect. It's just a three mana beater. But like, uh, in game one, at least. In game one, at least, yeah. So importantly, here, Black Sky Doc on Bugs Doomsday. You know, I have to put the edge in game one, obviously, to Black Sky Doc. He just has a very explosive deck, very easy to conceal what he is, and honestly, he's not going to be under much pressure here, besides, you know, a batter skull and like another turn. Yeah, and uh, I think we're going to see it that batter skull get taken away though here, depending. Yeah. See, as a player that plays with a lot of discard, I love the card Cabal Therapy. It's one of my favorite cards. It's one of my favorite thing when I play against Stoneforge Mystic decks because you're giving me free Cabal Therapy information. Yeah. And we're seeing a Force Negation response pitching to Fairy Time Raveler. So that uh, Thoughtseize just became a hint to Turok. Yeah. Seems all right. Yeah, I I really. Like I said, I really like Black Sky Dog's uh, position in this game, hey, at least in game one. And, you know, a Batter Skull is an effective beater, but it's just a, it's a really slow clock in comparison. This is the reason why we've seen uh, Stoneforge decks like kind of like disappear within the meta. But, like, they are still effective decks. But, I, I mean, think... just a Batter Skull doesn't get there anymore. Uh, I... I... Absolutely agree, especially against a deck like Doomsday, which, um, you know, if he has the nuts, then he can be 
you know, off to the races and and done with the game in one turn. Um, you know, the we're I'm not sure is Black Sky Doc on um the he does not have the Oh, uh, here we go. All right, so, the dark Lord's ritual into dark ritual into doomsday. There it goes. So Let's I I give... do think you got to get this out as quickly as possible against these types of uh fair decks. Um you in this deck you have got, you have a lot of access to counter magic which is obviously going to be really helpful in this uh this matchup uh especially with in the main uh four copies of days four copies of force of will i i think um something that's often you know not thought about the fact that doomsday is really a control deck it's a control deck with a combo finish uh you're rocking eight counter spells in the main and then in the case of black sky dock you've got another uh one two I mean, if you count Veil, which I do, three, four, five, five more in the side. So he's yeah. he's looking pretty good right now, I think. The deck is very resistant, and uh, you know that's one of the unique parts about Doomsday over any other combo deck is the fact that it is a thinking man's deck. You really do have to put together piles and stuff like that, but it's also very resistant with its combo. So it's one of those things that the extra counter spells uh, plus the information that you gained off of them forcing the thoughtsies plus cards in the hand it's time to go oh and Absolutely. you can go and with one blue mana up two three cards in hand you have a win here and uh to answer in the chat though left coast uh indeed i have known the wonderful feeling of instant speed discard on draw stuff with three fairy but let me one up you with that one i uh i use three fairy plus to unearth on my opponent's as draw step a seagate stormcaller and then double flashback cabal therapy from my graveyard to then rip their entire hand apart and uh if you want to know who, who that happened to hit up prez because i felt a little bit bad on that one homie <laughs> uh <laughs> the uh mind twist is a hell of a drug Oh yeah. Oh, it, it it is living the dream. The uh Mike, you've even been on that side of the uh the stage when we we jammed the game and I mean, my twist plus cabal uh, through cabal therapy is a lot of fun. Um so we got Black Sky just making a pile here. I I so it's going to depend entirely on what he's got in his hand obviously, but if he's got a cycler or a um, brainstorm. brainstorm then then this could be game right now. Oh, abrupt decay in the main. What do you think? That's a concision. Uh, concision for like I, is it some things you can't beat. So, um, I'm also running it in the main when I'm playing this, and it is really good against a lot of the uh, matchups that are more difficult. But it's also just a good piece of removal. I mean, it's great against Delver, um, which can be a problem because Delver can uh, put up a fast enough clock put up a fast enough clock that it's it's uh really difficult to to fight against um but it's also good against uh just i mean we've got a lot of artifact decks in the meta uh good against chalice good against um grim monolith uh anything that's going to cause uh oh did we get a preordain here yeah, preordain to draw the top card, keep this second card on top, and uh, pass. So it looks like Black Sky was going for a next turn win, and that's understandable. You have no life, uh, you have no life pressures. You have very much like everything is the ball in your court. And yeah, he even worked in duress into the pile to win. Do you think he? Uh... Oh, sorry, I was. Do you think he? Um had a piece of counter magic on top there to try and prevent against any sort of disruption. We've had, uh, we've seen that he, from him in the past. I think he had the counter magic in hand, honestly. Uh, yeah. he was very confident as soon as he saw that the, uh, uh the thoughts ease was force negations. And I bet you he has some sort of like days and, or, uh, cause it looks like he's got days and, Oh, is he on a days build? 
Yes. Yes, four days. Anyways, yeah. So I bet you either had four days. Uh, he either had one days or a force in his hand plus pitch. So. No, oh, I I think that we are going to see a victory here with Black Sky. Once you usually get the Dooms player, Doomsday player is allowed to go off, and actually resolve Doomsday. Their piles are just so resilient that it's it's just a matter of how it gets through. And you know, with uh, with uh, Thassa's Oracle's ability resolving uh, as a, a effect of its ability, if you've if you've got zero cards in your library, then uh removing it is is useless yes so exactly that was a huge upgrade for this deck and uh a lot of decks and then we see the edge of autumn to be cycled by sacrificing the land are we going to see okay another street wraith and are we going to see petal thassas oh cavern even better and thassas <laughs> yep and ggs and and this is what we're are seeing and like this is what we're following the you know the doomsday pile that is more effective is the one that's uh, it's the one that's resilient on game one so but going into sideboard here we do have some tools on the esper mid range pile the esper stone blade so we you, got oh, what was, uh, I was just gonna say what do you like here from esper stone blade well, so we got three Plague Engineers, two Supreme Verdict, one Null Rod, one Flusterstorm, one Spell Pierce, one Graft Digger's Cage, one Rest in Peace, there's one Jit, one Gilded Drake, one Back to Basics, one Meddling Mage, and one Kaya or Zarva Serper. So honestly, Null Rod is always just a solid bring in. It just cuts off the uh, the fast turns and uh, it cuts off the LED lines of uh, Doomsday. So that's always just solid to bring in. Uh, another important piece, I think, are the two pieces of counter spell magic, one being Flusterstorm, one being Spell Pierce. That being said, Doomsday has been known to play around that, and, you know, unfortunately, it's the same thing when you play against uh, Storm. Yeah, Flusterstorm and Spell Pierce are amazing, but when you're getting, you know, Thoughtsies and Duress, it's, it's a good gotcha card, as so long as they don't have hand disruption. Yeah. And, and then my final card that I would probably bring in is honestly back to basics because back to basics oh and uh, probably an additional meddling mage as well but back to basics can actually be like a killer for doomsday yeah yeah it, it's a very uh dual intensive deck black sky duck is only running uh three non-dual lands uh which obviously we saw in that last game him win off of all of them mm -hmm. so it may be off the radar of mtg play depending on how much he's played against this deck in the past um the one thing i would say is potentially not bringing in the null rod uh because it is a, a fairly normal line of doomsday to side out uh fast mana in these types of matchups because it's over commitment cracking an led against a uh a counter magic deck is uh a difficult line okay i i can see that and especially since looking at the list now you see only one led a three lotus petals um if you, what are you bringing in here if you're Black Sky Doc? Well, I was going to leave that up to you, but honestly, I'm just going to bring in the three veils. The three veils and maybe a carpet of flowers, but like the veils, minimal sideboarding, just call it good. I also like the defense grids um, in this, uh, you know, two force negation, four force of will. Uh, with the potential of more counter magic coming in um veils absolutely i think an argument can be made for the defense grids um and of argument can also be made for the uh the massacre um i could agree with that yeah uh, for the hate bears actually yeah i really like the massacre now that i think about it because of the fact that the opponent is running meddling mages is yeah but i mean once again Box, I didn't even get the chance to see that. And to be fair, there's no uh, Aether Vial or anything like that, so you have to play a Metal Mage on two. That's as fast as you can get it out. So, yeah, if I see a Stone Forge on Curve, for me at least, I'm thinking I'm gonna see, uh, you know, uh, recruiters and uh, Skyclaves and uh, probably Meddling Mages. Um, yeah. 
though importantly here, uh, Black Sky does know that this is not Esper Vile because of the fact that uh, Esper Vile doesn't play Stoneforge. Right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you want to see more of this and you want to uh, be a part of this, as uh, there you can hit the estimation point discord or, and there are uh you can get a link for the hey, discord and come hop in and play some events all these events are free we do have uh tokens that we give out as prizes uh we have brainstorm tokens and actually our new dark ritual tokens for the uh dark ritual players out there and uh we're gonna have uh, we have a bunch more prizes coming out and some other uh, fun uh, events that are going to be coming out. So we look forward to like seeing you know, more people. As you can see, new players here come in all the time with MTG plays. Yeah, and we're up over sixteen hundred members now. So. Oh yeah, and that's what's the best part about the uh, the Discord is that we have it's always active. We have. LFGs happening in the middle of the night. We have people always available to talk about stuff. People constantly brewing, selling cards. Nerds. They're just like shooting the shit, having fun, and it's uh, it's a great place to be and a great place to hang out. All right, it looks like we're getting ready to jump off uh, with the second game here. MTG is mulling. Uh, Black Sky kept his uh, his first seven. Yeah, if you're if you're on Doomsday here though, are you trying to go fast or are you trying to play the long game? Um, I think that you kind of need to tread a line against these types of decks. I think you need to be going uh, fast enough, but you also need to make sure that your hands are have enough counter magic to uh, hold yourself up against uh, what you're playing against here. So if I'm Black Sky Duck, I'm looking for, uh, you know, one of my combo pieces. So either a Doomsday or a Dark Rick, a couple of pieces of, a um, uh, couple of cantrips to dig a little bit into my deck, and then one or two pieces of counter magic and a land. Um, so I wanted to bring up a couple of concessions to uh, MTG plays his uh, deck building here because well he does have some main deck hate he just didn't see it game one first of it being his ashiok dream render in the main board and i'm one of the biggest proponents for this card i think it's amazing i think the card is just absolute gas uh, ashiok is an insane card but it in in uh against doomsday it literally just wins if they don't have abrupt decay for it it wins you it, they cannot beat this deck this card yeah i think that's I didn't even see that in the the main over there. It snuck in. Is it snuck in, and uh, yeah, it's insane. And then importantly here, Dovin's veto. That is a straight up no on Doomsday. Yeah. Doesn't care. Uh, doesn't care. Oh no, hold on. Veil vale beats it. Yeah. Because what doesn't that card beat? Um. Uh, veil. Vale. Fail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god. If, uh, the card is too good. The card should. It was a mistake. It was definitely oh. a mistake. So was everything else in 2019, but. Yeah. Yes, it was. And uh, now we are still seeing the repercussions of it. But that being said, it's still fun uh, to play. And, you know, I'm a green player at heart. I love the card greens on Zenith. I might be messing around with some Esper Jank now, but like I love green sun, green based decks, especially bug based decks. And as much as I love playing with the card, I understand how oppressive the card is. Well, I, I mean, you know me as an Elves player. Oh, yeah. I had it in my sideboard for a long time, um, and uh, it's just absurd. Oh yeah, uh, Smash Yawk, Left Coast, yeah. Oh yeah, I I think the card's great. In my, I ran it in my Nick Fit sideboard for, God, almost a year straight, honestly. 
uh, and in fact, it is still actually in my in Nick Fit sidebar. I just haven't played Nick Fit in a little bit. It is so good. And honestly, the hardest part about it is just getting to it. But in, in any matchup, it is like I will sacrifice whatever it takes a Phyrexian Tower to power that card out as fast as possible. Okay, so we get a first look at the hand. So we got Stoneforge, Force, Ponder, Skyclave. Why is there Skyclaves left in the deck? Unless you had like something to cut, you had stuff to cut. Yeah, I. I'm not sure what the line is there, um, unless I'm, he was anticipating. Uh, I'm yeah, I, I have no idea. Uh, what uh, do you take here? I'm 100% just take the force. There's yeah. take the force and just go off for the turn because it um, looks like. Do you take the force here, or do you take the ponder? Well, it, it depends on Black Sky's hand. If Black Sky can yeah. go off this turn, he takes the force. If he take if he can't go off this turn, he takes the ponder. 100%. Yeah. Um, well, we see he tapped his, we he's tapped out of uh, black, black mana man. right now. So well, I mean, um, that's, if he that's kept in the petals, then see in this kind of a matchup, I would. Oh yeah, looks like black side's going off. Looks like MTG realizes as well. It's just well, if you gotta go, if you can go, go. But importantly here, if Black Side can't go off here, and he, and he does, if he takes the ponder, he didn't take the ponder. Eesh. I would have probably done this the other way around. Play, uh, played out my ponder first, and then thought seized, just to see. If I was going to, yeah. Yep. I, uh, I realized the, oh, yep. And Black Sky just passes. I realized the importance of, uh, playing out your ponders. There's, uh, this last, uh, Tuesday when I lost game to reanimator because I left uh, surgical on top of my library. Cause I didn't, I, I was being greedy and wanted to, uh, double ponder with a Seagate storm caller the following turn. And I died because of it. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep, I was being greedy. I was being cocky, and then I and then I died. Because Reanimator is a good deck. Well, being able to look at you know potentially eight cards though is uh, pretty enticing. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. Uh, we're seeing a mirror here, uh, Ponder Shuffle. So at yep. least if we're we're Black Sky Doc here, we're hopeful that we're you know MTG play is not finding any counter magic on that draw well, there. Importantly here though, unless MTG plays top deck the blue card at any point during uh that for the first draw for draw for turn or draw after the ponder means that the only counter spell that Black uh, MTG could have up would be Dovin's veto. And it Potentially fluster storm or fluster storm or or uh, spell pierce. So, eesh, I I don't know. Yeah, I mean we've seen uh, Black Sky Doc come on here a number of times and just power through with this deck. It's a, it's an incredibly powerful deck. Oh yeah. Um, as fragile though. Yeah, I. Uh... I wrote an article about Doomsday a uh, while back, and sorry everybody for the articles that have been delayed. It's it's been a busy couple of weeks thanks with everything that's been happening, and uh, yeah, I, I need to get that out for you all. Oh, but uh, when I first wrote about Doomsday, I did a deep dive into learning about it because Black Sky also did a deep dive into learning about the deck. And when I first met Black Sky Doc, he was actually a Maverick, and he wanted to go into the combo world, and sure enough, he chose the biggest brain deck about uh, deck to learn about it. And uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things that the uh, uh, the deck itself has so many avenues and so many plays. It is really a giga brain type of deck to play. So Black Sky has options, but now we're seeing the 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 one type the thing that it just doesn't deal with is that's permanent base hate and a clock cuz remember doomsday cuts your life in half yeah um 
if anybody out there is interested in learning about doomsday there's a, a excellent uh wiki page ddft wiki that talks about all three of the primary uh forms of doomsday um it's where i went to to really try and do a deep dive and learn how to play that's what uh, my Google searching ended up th throwing out was that that wiki and yeah I I read all about it, it those types of decks so uh, between Doomsday and uh, when I did the World Gorge Dragon article was learning about just all the crazy ways that these decks have to win is insane and the, I didn't even know that there were like this many types of uh, decks these uh, this many types of uh, Doomsday piles oh, we just showed and, a daze there by accident. <laughs> I was just about to say that the mistake days, Ugh. but thank you, Left Coast, for the compliment. I I, I do. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't been able to put them out. It's like things have been insane here uh, between the virus, between everything else that's been happening. So like I've uh, I've been trying to deal with work over the articles, and I'm sorry about that. For everybody who doesn't know, uh, Doc DeLeo is, is not just a uh, a, a funny moniker. Uh, we have an actual factual doctor here. Uh, yeah uh, we're, thanks trying Heck, to save yeah. the world uh, unfortunately it's one of those things that when you work in the uh, the, the epidemiology side of things in the middle of a pandemic you don't get much time to breathe <laughs> but uh it's one of those things that i do love doing the articles and i do try to do them all for you guys and i'm sorry i've been delayed on it it actually like makes me feel terrible Oh, but uh, I'll get them out to you guys as soon as possible. I'm doing a big season one. And honestly, the reason why it's taking so long is because there's just so much data I have to go through. I've caught up on all the uh, the tournament reports. I've gone through. And honestly, I'm dumping a big chunk of data about what the Discord has looked like over a four-month period. And, and uh, it, you know, we're looking at decks here that you know people brewed up they tried for events stuff like that what did well what did uh, poorly where the discord has shaped up and honestly it's a lot of work and i i'm really excited for this next article though it's gonna be a good one for you all i'm trying to get an decay here on the germ that's uh, that's an answer at least but importantly here what's the equip cost for the germ and uh, Prince, of, uh, Prince of Phonics, thank you for the follow. Much love. And, uh, you know, hit up the Discord. Heard. We love putting on these types of events for everybody. So we're at five mana now, which is hard cast force range or bounce uh, batter skull at end of turn. Uh, yeah, but importantly, MTG got in for another hit of damage rather than hold up the trigger. And Struggler2535, thank you for the follow. Much appreciation, buddy. Dude, dude, I I'm really interested in what CNTG has in hand. It's got to be a five mana force. Is it one card in hand? Well, I think it's one card in hand. Uh, let's check with our table spotter and big thank you to Prez this week for being the awesome table spotter. Uh, looks like. All right, we're seeing a duress here. Oh, oh, okay. Three cards in hand, and yep. Okay, so we got. I if if you're Black Sky Doc here, you're just taking that Strix, right? Taking them yeah. away from any option to draw anything else. Well, the thing is, Dress can't hit Strix. Uh, it hits not. Oh, major. right, right, right. So we're seeing an end of turn. I think this is an end of turn. Uh, let me, let's double check with our table spotter. Uh, end step uh, return battle skull. End step return battle skull tanking. Yep. And I think he's realizing that uh, should not have attacked for the one. Because <laughs> then you could do the trick where you flicker and then put it back in immediately. If you're MTG play here, do you bounce the, the battle skull or do you just equip it to Stoneforge on the next turn? That's an interesting question. Uh, I feel like just equipping it to the Stoneforge and, and getting in for that extra point of damage is very enticing because getting him down to getting Black Sky Dock down to four uh, seems decent. So my issue with that is is basically when 
you play with uh, Flicker with not Flicker with, but uh, when you play with Batter Skull and the uh, what's we call it, the Stillforge on the scene, have have them both active. Batter Skull is basically invincible. So at any point, if you have three or five mana up, definitely in total, if they point a removal spell at Batter Skull, you can tap three mana to reach. Uh, well, the sequence is, is you activate Stoneforge Mystic for two. Then you oh, then maintain priority and activate the Batter Skull, flickering that to your hand, and then you can then put it back into play with the Stoneforge Mystic trigger that you maintain priority on. This allows it to basically flicker without oh, actually being available to hit even within your hand or on the field. So that's why I like just keeping up the Stoneforge Mystic. I mean, the extra one point of damage can matter, and when it does matter, you go for it. But honestly, I I like just keeping up that. And that's the reason why I put him off tempo for a turn was that. But, I mean, he got there in the end, and, you know, that's the thing with Doomsday. As long as you have a fast clock, that's all that matters. There's a beat yeah, I, I don't think I've ever cast a Batter Skull in my life, so thanks for that uh, The little... Uh... Oh, neither have I. I've I've never once cast a batter skull. I just watched a lot of Pleasant Kenobi videos. Oh, fair. <laughs> no, I uh, I I can appreciate Stoneforge Mystic for what it is. I can appreciate the combination of Stoneforge Mystic and Batter Skull. I just never wanted to ever play white ever in my life until I discovered this wild uh, CG Stormcaller deck. It's just not my thing. Mr. Jack Dex uh, That's jumping true. in to say Batter Skull is a great card. Oh, don't get me wrong. Batter Skull is a phenomenal card. And honestly, I really do like the combination of Stoneforge Mystic, especially in the decks that can really utilize it. Decks with uh, Recruiter of the Guard, primarily white based decks. I have had my own time with Death and Taxes as well. It's just not my kind of uh, game. I like Leovold. I'd rather cast a 1 1 for 1 off a of basic forest. Mm hmm. Oh, I'm right there as well, just with Veteran Explorer text on there. Oh, see, oh, yeah. uh, I That's like my, my moment of choice. I like the cards that I cast to be good. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nick fits oh, awesome no. deck. No, it's fine, dog. I no, no, no. I, I understand. I play a meme deck, but that's the thing is, like, I understand it's a meme deck, but it's a meme deck that has heart. It's got legs, and, right? Oh, it's got like, legs. I've had I, I've had it handed to me plenty of times from uh, from Nick Fit. I think it's a great deck and it's a lot of fun. And well, you know, it's just here. one of those things that like there are very few decks play basics uh, at yeah. this point. So well, back in the day, back in the day, less play, uh, played basics. It's when Snowco piles now. I mean, they're constantly. I mean, I run six basics in Nick Fit, and Snowco piles are running eight. It's like meh. So, yeah. so because of that, it's not the best positioned. But uh, honestly, what it is is just it's, it's not that Nick Fit is amazing. It's that it's the fact that Cabal Therapy is just that good in Legacy. If well, Cabal just, Therapy that ramps you for two mana is even better. Exactly. If you can if you can hit Cabal Therapy, and I mean we've played before. I've had a lot of experience with Cabal Therapy, and not as a good Cabal Therapy deck like Reanimator or Dredge or Hogak. I've been playing Cabal Therapy where I have to hit because I'm playing Nick Fit. I don't have force. Cabal Therapy is my force of will. That's so, uh, for I mean, for a long time, Elves was playing Cabal Therapy uh, over Thought Seizes. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing. You had to you had to hit. Yeah, and honestly, once you uh, in Legacy, if you are able to master Cabal Therapy and Brainstorm, that's where the skill curve uh, really comes in. And so uh, what we we were playing the other day and you in the course of two turns took five cards out of my hand with Cabal Therapies. Yeah, I we played a total of three games. I hit three for three for blind. And uh, honestly, that, that comes from just knowing formats. And I played against a lot of elves. One of my good friends from my LGS plays is elves. And uh, it's one of those things that it rewards format knowledge. You know what a keep uh, what a keepable hand looks like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Black Sox starting off here with the preordain and an underground C and immediately bottoming two cards. That you know, if that's signaling anything to me, that's signaling I need a land. It's I need a land or 
I need counter magic or I need a, a, a combo piece. Oh, yeah. If he's trying to go fast, which I feel like after that last game, just seeing what happened, I want to go fast. Oh, yeah. I'm right there with you. I, I agree completely. And Brian, and I, I think you are correct, is just giving that that extra point of damage for Clock. I mean, it's so important against Doomsday. I mean, you can't half your life, because half your life rounded down, if I remember correctly. I got Doomsday pulled up here. Um, Doomsday is... You use uh, half your life rounded up. Okay, it's rounded yeah. up. Okay. But still, you can't cycle, oh, Street Wraith and stuff like that, and you only have one edge, edge of bottom in the deck. All right, yeah. so we're getting a Misty fetching a... Another Underground. Understandable. In, yeah. uh, in my other deck that I play, Ant, uh, the, the fetch pattern is always Underground, Underground, and then, like, Prey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was talking earlier, the list that I run for Doomsday and Black Skies lists are only a couple off, and... Uh, one of the one of the things that I do is I play another a fourth underground C because it's just so nice to have access to to both of those colors because yeah yeah UC is just so important yeah and honestly if you don't uh, if you don't have access to blue and black and there's no other replacement I mean that's the reason why UC is the reserve dual land that you watch it's like how good's UC doing okay then the reserve list is up. Absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, especially looking at this Esper deck, and I've never had to oh. own Tundras. I'm just like, oh. It's an unlimited UC. Oh, oh, it is an unlimited UC? That's what Prez is telling us. Oh, nice. Someone loves their decks. Oh, uh, that's, that's out of my price range. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. All right. We got the the fetch. Uh, oh no, we're seeing brainstorm after the fetch. And ponder. Okay, so I wonder if the meddling mages came in. That's my because we didn't see that in game two. I but I'm just but, surprised that skyclave apparition is still in the deck. Yeah, I think that. If your MTG play the the Skyclaves for the meddling mages is an easy easy swap, um, so I'm I'm also pretty surprised that those were left in. Yeah, like the meddling uh, the Skyclave apparitions of the Brazen Borrowers like barely do anything. Uh, I don't think Brazen Borrower actually has a legal target in this deck besides the Esper the uh, the Thassa's Oracle. Yeah. So we're just seeing draw go here from Black Sky Doc, um, which probably means that he's got either a Doomsday but no uh, Dark Rit or a bunch of uh, counter magic. We're seeing okay. we're seeing double, double fetch. fetch here. So we'll see what if he if he goes and grabs. Uh, he's he's definitely got to grab two more black sources. Whether it's going to be an, a UC and a Bayou. Um, I think I grab a UC and a Bayou at this point. Yeah, um, UC Bayou. Yep. Like you see, you need that access to the black mana, and yeah. I I think we're gonna see a three mana Doomsday. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> there it is. You gotta go for it. I think. Uh... Uh, it's resolved. That that life total went down to half. And all right, so we have no mana available. So unless you're trying to make a pile with, yeah, this is a pass, pass and pray type pile. Yeah, uh, I I think it's a pass. I I feel I think it feels like a safe pass, right? Because now you've got the Bayou, you can work your uh, Veil of Summer into your pile. Uh, you, you, this is potentially even and you know if you left the LED in and ideas unbound. Uh, or an ideas unbound with backup in the pile and uh a lotus petal and uh uh so here's the only thing you're passing into mtg play this is going to his third turn 
you haven't thought seized or anything like that. So what if he has a powerful three mana spell like Ashiok, Meddling Mage, or even worse, back to basics? Because you don't want to tap. Yeah. So like, I think back to basics is game. I think I think like, honestly, um, a Ashiok down tick is game. Ashiok down tick. I would say you have as long as you're putting Thassa at the bottom, right? Because Ashiok down tick Thassa at the bottom, cast that you're you're good. Okay. You know what I mean. Uh, as long as he has counter magic in hand. Okay, I, I I'm nervous. MTG let that go away. Uh, he's he's can't trip twice. And he let that doomsday go. I'm guessing there's got to be a three powerful three mana play. Champagne, yeah, LED can get there. LED could definitely get there. But as uh, my uh, my co commentator was pointing out, you oftentimes cut out the LED and stuff like that because of the fact that you don't want to get blown out by null rod and stuff like that. Um, I just don't want to. I I don't want to cycle with an LED, crack LED, drop my counter magic, and then uh, get my uh you know my next spell all right. countered all right let's right, see you can it. set it up all right so we get a caracas is this is this meddling mage i think this is Medli i think he's got a meddling mage in hand because he went blue white yeah okay i don't know like back to basics would be literally game I'm over i think yeah, uh, I, th rough. I think that back to basics is just so back backbreaking in this. Um, Champagne's pointing out in the chat that Lotus Petal might get around it uh, if he's got Cavern in hand. That's true. Um, I'm not sure how many cards Black Sky Mage. has in hand. Uh, okay. There's a mage. It's naming. It's gotta be naming Thassa's Oracle. Cast measure back. Uh, but uh, it resolves. What's the name? Name is. Apparently, MTG did not expect to, to resolve. It's got to be a hey, Thassa's Oracle. Yeah, so we're seeing him named Thassa's Oracle here. Yep. Um, which yep. is the correct one. Yeah, um, I agree. And now yeah, you got to protect this thing. For, for Black Sky Doc, you know, if he's got the uh yeah uh brian in chat is talking about the the abrupt decays so if, if black sky docks left the abrupt decays and he's got one in hand um, yeah but we see we see an abrupt decay face uh, face up on the exile pile and we're we know that there's one abrupt one decay in the main, main two and in two the side. more in the side we didn't see i saw there was at least one uh, one other one in the deck so unless he has one built into the pile, I don't think that's he could win through this. Yeah, I'm not seeing another line unless he has an abrupt decay in there somewhere. Um This is this is nerve wracking. Cause if I'm black sky I, would you inherently put an abrupt decay in the pile? Because I don't know. I think I'm more likely to put counter magic in the pile. Um, but yeah, if you're exactly. gonna put counter magic in the pile, then is Champagne saying unearth? Is he running unearth? Uh. No, Champagne. This is this is like an Esper mid range pile. Uh, check out the 
uh, the cardboard live link. Yep. Yeah, uh, predict and um, predict on Earth is is a package that has been seeing less and less play. Um, mass, uh, to fill you in, homie. Oh, we got a massacre. Okay, that'll do it. That'll do go. it. Uh, Bass, so this is game three. Doomsday Pile has been resolved. MTG slammed a Thassa's Oracle, uh, well, meddling mage naming Thassa's Oracle. And uh, all of those cards went bye bye because Massacre was built into the pile. Yeah, and that's a really smart line. Yeah. That's, um, that's definitely a play. No, no on Earth for Black Sky Doc either. I know some lists. I actually I don't know if some of the lists were playing uh, Thassa's Oracle. I was thinking about EDH for a second. They were playing Reanimate. Um. So. Yeah. Uh, Doomsday isn't really playing on Earth anymore. There are a couple of lists out there that are that are playing the Predict on Earth package, but it's it's a little bit too fragile. I agree. Um, it just plays with how much uh, surgical is being played right now with uh, really strong graveyard lists being at the top of the meta. Uh, I, it's just become a, a very, uh, very difficult card to play. Uh, Charble, this is uh, Jameson uh, Stout Whiskey a, uh, on the rocks, how I prefer to drink it. So, uh, enjoying uh, the day. No. Oh, no, no, no. This isn't, this ain't, uh, uh, I think it, I think it's aged in a cask, but it's not, uh, uh several years. There's uh, not a scotch yet. Black Sky does have cavern in the list. Okay. Yeah. There is, a, there is one cavern. Yeah. I wonder if that's built into the pile. It's gotta be against a force will base deck. Oh, I I am I'm not building a pile here without it. I I agree. And yep, we're seeing a street race cycle. I think MTG was yep, cavern naming Merfolk. And that's all she wrote. We yep. got no right stifles or trick binds from MTG, so nope. that's going to be the game. And that is it. Black Sky Doc once again taking down another or one of these hey, uh, legacy challenges. You know, going five zero again. Is this his third uh, weekly challenge win? Uh, I think it's his second. Okay. And so Black Sky Doc might be tied with our Doomsday. I think it might be his third, actually. Now that I think about, yeah, it's his third. Yeah, so I think third. it is so, his third. Yep. So Black Side Doc is now tied with our leader, Shadow Oni. Now, once again, this is a new season. We have started out, so the new season is going on for about three, three and a half months. So Black Side Doc is going to be our first our real victor of the. No, wait, we had uh, last weekend as well. So, oh, um. Uh, so since we're on the new season, and uh, Shadow Uni had the highest amount of wins last season, you know, Black Side uh, Doc though three all for all time record tied up with Shadow Uni. You know, both players play very good combo decks that are resilient to Force of Will and can also like really go explosively. So honestly, if you're a player on the Discord, you gotta be looking out for these two cards, these two decks. Yeah. Um, so every Saturday, two o'clock, we run this weekly challenge. Uh, come out, compete, and maybe you can find yourself on the stream. Um, we also have Tuesday night fight nights. Uh, last week we had a, a mod fight night, so we had some of the uh, the willing victims of the uh, MTGPL play against some of the mods. Yeah, that was a that was a good time. I had a great a great time coming out. But yeah, so we have weekly events. We have F and M's. Not only this, and honestly, Black Saga Doc is also oh now oh Victor Victor and getting their token for this this year. So uh, it's one of those things that we have tons of events going on. Awesome new events coming up every single week, and uh, you know, 
come in and get involved. It's a good place to hang out. And uh, 1,600 other people that love the format, love uh, getting involved and having a good time.